Hey everybody, I'm John. This is the Midnight Paint and Body YouTube channel. In this video, we are once again tackling rockers and cab corners on a GM truck. So let me show you what we're working on this week, guys. I know you're, if you follow the channel, you might be thinking, you've done rocker and cab corner videos before. You're right. I'm doing another one. Maybe you didn't see the last one. It's just it's what I'm working on this week. Figured what the heck. So what we're working on this time, this is an 06, I believe, uh, GMC truck. Now, have a look at this truck. This thing is so nice. Actually, look inside the box. It doesn't look like it's ever been used. So, a little tight at this end of the shop and kind of dark. I need some ballasts up there, but... What do you do? I haven't had the extra money to replace them lately, so... So, this side. Perfect. No issues, rockers, cab corners. So, I guess we're not doing rockers and cab corners. We're doing a rocker and a cab corner. So, this is a nice low mileage pickup. This thing's in really, really nice shape. Well, we'll get around to this side. And as you can see, she's wasted. This one's totally done. So, I mean, I don't know why sometimes they go like this. The other side's fine. I think here where we live in British Columbia, we get the, you know, all the sand and salt and everything on the roads. It probably kind of gets pushed into the middle mostly because I do find the driver's side of these vehicles usually goes first. So this is what we're going to be doing. And also the fuel door. You probably notice in a lot of these trucks, they always tend to bubble with rust. Now, that isn't something that can be cleaned up. When you see that, it's rusted through. It's just how it is. So, I have a new fuel door for this. So, we'll be doing that. And we're also replacing the tailgate. Why the heck are you replacing that tailgate, you're asking? Well, you probably can't see that well in here, but this one is rusted all the way along and the thing with these they are a pinch weld So the metal wraps around so it's metal on metal the rust is in between You can't get it out of there short of cutting the thing apart now In this case You know we could have cleaned that up and got a few more years out of it, you know treated the inside, but fellow that owns this truck obviously the thing is beautiful he said let's just fix it right he said I'm, you know I'm not I'm not buying another new pickup you know especially with the low mileage on this one why would you so we're gonna be replacing that gate so that's gonna take us to parts one of the most common questions I get with the stuff that I do and yeah I know I'm still wearing my toque and jacket but I just turned the heat on it's still cold in here just warming up. People always ask, what website do you order your parts from? And I, every single time, I say, just go to your auto parts store. You get the parts. If the parts are wrong, you return them. The ordering online, you just never know what you're going to get. Um, so in this case, so I order everything through LKQ Canada. I order direct from them. They're not a consumer site, so you can't order direct from them but any auto parts store can get stuff from them. Um, in this case, our cab corner is an RRP 1668. Uh, the RRP designation is repair panel, so it's a partial panel. So we've got the cab corner, and then the rocker panel. Now, this is another thing. So these rockers that I use are the OEM style. These are also a repair panel. Here, I'll show you the part number on these real quick. And this one is, it's an RRP 1459. So this is left side, so right side would be an RRP 1460. 
Now, these are not cheap. These are, depending where you are. Now again, I get these parts without freight. So these are five, $600 a piece. You might find them online for $300 and then $300 shipping to get it to you. I'll also get guys say, oh, I see them online for 89 bucks. You can get $89 rocker panels. Now, if you were to get the cheap slip-on rockers, what you're getting is just a stamped piece like these. These are actually some Dodge rockers that sit in here. I, I actually keep these around because they are cheap and I find they're actually good for cutting up to make other panels. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use them at rockers, as rockers, unless they're a last resort. Now these are just a thin, stamped, raw metal, inexpensive way to do it. And that's fine if you're just trying to patch up a truck for a while. The stuff that I do, I warranty. So I only use these OE style rockers. Now, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but these are heavy. These are like, I'm guessing probably a 12 gauge metal much heavier than even the factory sheet metal like literally heavy these things weigh a ton these are solid these are good quality parts so that is the difference between an oem style rocker and a slip-on rocker now the slip-on rocker will typically just come up and slip over this edge these oem style we're going right into the door openings, right into the pinch welds. So it, with these doors are coming off, boxes coming off, all that. So hopefully all that makes sense to you. Um, why I use the style and where I get them from. So our first step on this truck is going to be just to do some tear down. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get the box off. So I'm going to get working on that, I'll bring you guys back and show you how that's progressing. So I've got the bed ready to lift off here guys, so pretty easy on these trucks actually. Um, unplug the tail lights at the main plug, which is attached to the frame, undo your filler neck, and then there's two, four, six, eight bolts that go up holding it on. They are typically pretty good to come out. Now, on these trucks, like even on something as clean as this, this, this truck's incredibly clean underneath too. I always just take just a bottle torch, like a little propane torch and heat the bolts up before taking them out because they are on those fold over nuts in the frame. And if they seize, they snap off and then you're in there trying to cut bolts out and that is terrible. I believe they're loctited from the factory, so that little bit of heat tends to break free a little nicer. For the couple of minutes extra it takes, rather than just hitting them with the impact and risking breaking those things, which is a real pain in the butt, it's worth it. So, if you follow my channel, you've seen me take pickup boxes off many times, and I have always used some big straps crisscrossed in the box and my engine hoist. But recently, I bought this. So this came on sale at Princess Auto, which for you guys in the US is basically Harbor Freight. I've always wanted one of these. This came on sale for like 120 bucks. I just couldn't pass it up. So obviously it's just gonna go inside the bed. These arms are gonna extend out and just go underneath the lips and then they'll lock into place. Um, Obviously, it is a cheap tool, not a high-end one, but it seems solid. I don't see any issues with it. Um, I think, honestly, the weakest point on this thing might be these welds right here. I don't know how much I love those and just this thin strap, but anyway, we're going to give her a shot. Um, so I'm going to set this up, and then I'll set up the camera, and I'll bring you guys along to see how this works. So there's a new bed lift all set up in place. So basically I just kind of roughly measured center, um, even though this might be heavier at the front, so I might have to adjust it a bit. Yeah, we'll try our first lift and just see how this thing works. 
Got a little bit of tension on it there. Now, once you slide these out, just lock these into place, but they don't, of course, line up with these clevis pins. Um, and these are expand, extended out almost to the last hole. So, I mean, obviously these are made for, made in China for Chinese trucks. I don't know. They're, uh, you think it'd be a, a little bigger for domestic full-size trucks, but we'll give her a shot. If I don't like the way it looks, I'm just gonna go back to my old strap system. So I'm going to move this box out of the way. I'm actually going to, before I start working on the truck, I'm going to pressure wash the frame. I always like to do that while the box is off for the customers. It's areas you can't get at, although that thing, like the rest of the truck, is super clean. But I clean it up nice for them. And then we'll bring the truck back in and get the doors off and start on that rocker. So there's the box off and out of the way. I've done a little rearranging in the shop, make a little more room. So our next step in this process, if I don't trip over that Turbo 350 transmission, is to remove the doors. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these doors off. Um, yeah, that's all straightforward stuff. Do I need to record that? No. I'll bring you guys back when the doors are off. So I just gotta show you on this truck, guys. So uh, rear door is already off. Super easy, um, these ones, you just pull out this plug right there and you can undo those plugs to get the door out. There are a set bolt in each hinge, which you'll see right there. So you need to take out that one, that one on the door stop and that one. Doors will lift right up. On the front doors, they can be a little tricky to get in there, but you pull this plug out of the hinge pillar and then if you follow this wiring in so you will need to take off this kick panel uh, and it goes up here to the fuse block so you just need to unplug this guy from right in there it's kind of dark i guess but but if you follow it it's pretty easy but i just need to show you this on this truck i mean i've worked on some nice trucks clean trucks but i have never seen one like this these are always packed with muck and dirt and rust and I mean this thing looks brand new I can't believe this truck so nice it just impresses me when someone looks after a vehicle like this man this thing's in good shape so anyway I just need to be extra careful to not get any dust inside this thing I'm always pretty good about that but uh, you always miss some but man oh man this thing's nice so I'm gonna pop this door off. We'll move on to this rocker. So I'm just gonna go back a couple steps here, guys. So uh, when I was talking earlier about the parts, uh, talking about the OE style rockers versus the cheap slip-on style, I do have a chunk of a slip-on style rocker here. So I just thought I'd show you guys how these ones work. So now these obviously aren't going right up into the pinch welds. These guys. This one's got the back there. set the camera down. So this piece here would go in behind the cab corner. And then these are basically just going right to this flange. Now, as you can see by the bubbling here, our rust has gone beyond that point. But if you were just patching up an old truck for yourself, 
you know, you're not a body man, you're just uh, got one of these trucks that's all rotten like that. You can buy these slip-on rockers. Um, I haven't bought these in years, but I, I think you can get them around 100 bucks a piece. They're not expensive. And then, I mean, if you've got a crappy old rusty truck, you could take these guys, you don't have a welder, drill some holes, pop rivet them in there, you know, same on the bottom if there's enough left. Put some primer and paint on them and on the inside and you can you can patch one of these old trucks up to look a lot better i mean it might uh, buy you a little time it might get you through uh you know a vehicle inspection if you've got something that's all rotten like this you know you can take a zip cut to grinder and cut the worst of this stuff out so you're not just going right over top of that and sealing all that rust in you know you could cut a lot of this out and just put these guys right on top so it is a cheap do-it-yourself alternative now what i'm doing here with the full rockers is more what i consider to be the right way to do these and you know this to me that's not sufficient for a truck this nice that would be that this is something for just patching something up i have used these i have done you know work trucks or stuff like that for guys where they just want to you know buy a couple more years and cover up the rust and that's you know i i prefer not to do these i prefer to do work that i can do right and warranty but just thought i'd show you those you know it it is an alternative nothing wrong with them if you're just trying to uh, buy a little time out of a truck and not going for you know a good quality lasting repair it'll definitely get you a few years so if you happen to follow my channel and you've seen these videos before, I mean, you can skip this part. This is information I share every time, but um, moving on to this part of the rocker panel. So our new rocker, we're going to be splicing in right around here. And these ones I usually trim in right around there and cut them in depending on the condition of the existing metal. But the first thing we're going to do is drill out some of these spot welds. So basically, you know, from here to here, and the same up there and then we'll we'll make the call with the new part how far we're going but so you see these spot welds i will just take a center punch a little punch on them and then i'll take a big drill bit and drill out the spot weld but we're not drilling through because we're going to be welding the new panel to that existing back panel so we just want to kind of drill out halfway through if that makes sense for me, I find this works better than using spot, spot weld cutters. Um, so I'll just do one here and kind of show you guys if you're interested. We'll take our spot weld, just give her a mark in the center. Hopefully I'm gonna do a bit. I'll probably switch to a sharper bit after this one. And there we go. So I'll drill it about halfway through. You'll, you'll kind of see where the, the two pieces of metal are, are uh, where the separation is. And then from there, I will, once they're all drilled out, I'll take a chisel or my air chisel and get in between those panels and pull them apart. Sometimes they fall right apart. Sometimes there's a little bit of weld left, but you're getting rid of most of it. So that, that's all gonna come apart nicely. So I'm gonna carry on and do all of these. And I'll bring you guys back shortly. So I've gone ahead and drilled out most of the spot welds uh, along our rocker panel, along the front, along the back opening here. And then I've done these few down the cab corner. We are going to need to get underneath after and get spot welds all the way along. Uh, but we'll get to those after. I like to just start trimming metal out of the way. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do first is start trimming back this cab corner. Now, I say this all the time in these videos. Now, these panels, I think the cab corners usually come just above this body line. The idea of these replacement panels is you use what you need from them. Just because the panel goes to there doesn't mean you have to go to there. I typically will cut a little lower, and as long as the metal is good, that's where I'll go to. Now, obviously, the condition of this truck, we're not having rust all the way up these cab corners. 
So I'm going to start quite low, probably round about here, and see how things look, and we'll go from there. The other thing, when you start cutting into a truck, no matter what you're working on, you know, you don't take your zip cut. You don't want to just start slicing and dice and cutting deep. Now these do have other inner panels. The same in these rockers. If you were to start cutting, these actually have a support panel in behind. So you want to just cut that top layer of metal. You don't want to be digging way in there. So I'm going to start with this cab corner and we'll start just bit by bit getting some of the sheet metal out of the way. So there's a cab corner trimmed out of the way. And as you can see, we clearly have good metal. I mean, we're, we're definitely not gonna have to go up high on this one. So, you, and something to always to consider too, these do have some insulation up in there. So be super careful when you get to your welding. Um, I'll be taking some precautions there. We'll get to that when we get to it. Now I've seen these many times where all this inner structure is even just completely gone. This, truck again I mean just continues to amaze me how clean it is so I'm gonna move on to our rocker here and the same thing I'm gonna just start kind of trimming it out piece by piece I'll probably kind of make a cut here and down into here somewhere this area and take this section out and then we'll just keep moving up so here's most of our old rocker trimmed back we're gonna do our first kind of fit of our new rocker. Now I did cut the front off of this rocker panel. So there's our front piece. I found whenever I do these now, you can take the front fenders off and go all the way in, but the metal is always good at the front of these. The uh, rust, typically everything runs towards the back. So the worst is always at the back. Front is usually good. So I'm gonna splice in my new rocker right around there. So we'll butt that up, but let's just do our first kind of fit. I'll just sort of show you guys what I do from here. So now you can see how these fit in place. So this is going to give me an idea where I'm going to be cutting. So in here, I'll probably just cut this existing metal back to match where I've cut this one. So we'll have butt that up nicely there. It's going to be the same kind of thing here. Um, yeah, so I'll probably just make a mark and I, I like to, I'll kind of cut and then I'll refit and I'll kind of keep working to where I've got everything fitted nicely. And then back here, I think I'm actually gonna just cut off of the new rocker until I match up where I am there because my cab corner doesn't really need to go any higher. Or I might just trim back a little more cab corner. We'll see. But anyway, one way or another, that's kind of the, the initial fit. Now we just work our way in from there. So I got everything pretty much trimmed up for the rocker. Over on there and show you guys. So it always pays to spend a little extra time the fitting, cutting, trimming, a little bit at a time. If you want to get it just right, they don't uh, they don't just fall into place. So that's just loosely fit, but so you can see. Bang that down into place a little bit once I get it right down onto that lip and clamp the bottom. So we're going to have a nice butt match right there. So no overlapping metals. That's just edge to edge. So once I have it fitted right nice and tight and welded up, it's going to be a nice fit. And the same back here, you can see this metal. It's not an exact fit to the new part, but that's not a big deal. I've got access up here. So 
uh, I would probably just kind of you know do a tack in there and then I'd, I'll just kind of work this metal and this metal you know from the inside a little bit and then from the outside a little bit until they join up nicely but I find that's easy to do you know if I put a weld here it'd be nice and hot and I can kind of just tap that edge and kind of keep working along that way so but yeah so that'll be an all a nice butt match and then we'll move on to the cab corner after that now always before I final weld I'll probably throw a couple of tacks on this and that'll fit the doors so don't skip that step if you get these rockers right where they're supposed to be they are usually bang on you don't usually have to do anything but I have had them where they're just up just a hair too high where I'm not happy with them you just need to you know tap them down a little bit before you weld the bottom so you just want to make sure you've got that nice fitment so we'll get that in place and then we'll do the cab corner once this rocker is kind of welded in because this is again we're gonna fit it up nice we're gonna butt match it and we will be probably doing that while I have the door on for checking the fit on the rocker so I'm gonna pull this rocker back off and I'm gonna coat this whole inner panel and everything I can reach kind of up in there just with a brush and some rust preventative paint. Uh, just, again, you don't have to do it. It's an extra step I always like to do. Uh, just a little extra prote protection on a customer vehicle. It'll just make them last that little bit longer, hopefully. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, it's getting close to the end of the day. I definitely won't be doing any welding today. It's too close to the end of the day. Uh, so I'll kind of get that rocker treated up and then I'll, I'll see if there's anything else I'm gonna get to before I shut her down for the day. So we're ready to start fitting up our cab corner. So I've gone ahead and just welded the seam quickly. I've just ground it off in this area because this is where, where we're going to be fitting the cab corner to. Now you want to do this part with the door on because we're going to be keeping track of our door gap as we fit up the cab corner. Now like I mentioned before, as you can see, these cab corners go up above the body line. I'm going to butt weld it right there. So usually what I do with these is I will kind of fit it, I'll make a mark, I will trim this off kind of rough, I'll trim it too big and then just kind of uh, keep trimming back until I've got it fitted right where I want it. So we've got Again, that nice butt match, so just edge to edge, no overlap metal. You don't have to do it that way, that's the way I like to do it, makes a nicer job. Um, if you're going to try overlapping metal here, it's going to throw off your gaps, obviously. If you're going to have your metal sitting on top of there, you're going to have it stacked up and you're going to weld and you're going to have to blend it out with body filler. So it's going to throw your gap, the flushness of your gap, out of whack. Um, but if you're not a uh, experienced body man, you know that might be the way you want to do it because uh, butting them up is it's a little more work. It's a little tougher to do. It's definitely a little tougher to weld nicely. But uh, in, in my mind, it's the right way to do it. You know, like I always say, guys, I'm not telling you this is how you need to do it. I'm just showing you what I do to hopefully help some guys out with the projects. And I am by no means the the authority in this stuff i'm just a guy that does body work so just sharing what i do so i'm gonna start trimming up this cab corner a bit and then we'll start the fitting process so i've got my cab corner trimmed up to fit so like i said i just kind of rough trimmed it and then i just kind of fine tune it a little bit at a time and just take the grinder and you know, buzz this edge a little, buzz this edge a little as it needs it until I get her to fit. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Well, you get the idea. So, obviously, it's not right in place because I'm holding it with one hand, but it does fit nicely. And the back does fit nicely, just not when I'm holding it like this. So we will be getting that in place. First, I will be punching some holes along this flange on the back 
for plug welds. The so same with this flange on the inside. We'll be plug welding down here. I'll be putting some primer over top of this stuff that's going to be covered up with the cab corner. And shortly we will start tacking this guy in place. So here's our cab corner in place, uh, just on with a couple of small tack welds. You can see our gap is nice. I'm gonna show you how the inside looks. So I've punched some holes in it for some plug welds along that uh, lip on the inside. Show you the back here. And the same thing back here. So we've got uh, just holes for plug welds. Push that in a little tight and to finish welding everything so as always with any of this kind of stuff be super duper careful of course when you're welding i've got all the insulation and stuff that i could out of there but i still i tend to like to do just small welds and a lot of cooling and just make darn sure nothing's on fire inside um so yeah just take your time so i'm gonna go ahead and uh do a little more, a couple more welds on the outside of this and I'll pull this door back off, cover everything back up and I'm going to finish up all of my welding. So there's our rocker and cab core all welded into place and partially prepped up. Now I jumped ahead a little bit on you guys. You might notice obviously I've stripped all of that black electrical primer off. Not totally necessary I don't always take that primer off you know if it was just a fender or something I would you know sand it seal it leave it on there with the rockers because they take so much more abuse you know with the rocks along the bottom and with stepping in and out of the truck I always take this stuff off just so I know I'm starting fresh with a good quality epoxy primer and then my urethane high build primer so just a little more peace of mind uh, just Again, I always kind of take every extra step I can to ensure customer vehicles are going to last as long as they possibly can, you know, to the best of my abilities. So, there's how we're looking. Just my final step here before primer. It's going to be a little bit of body filler to smooth out these areas where I've butted up to the existing metal. So just some minor body work, not much at all. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I've got a little bit of other work to do on the truck and painting the roof as well. It's got some peeling paint. Uh, but I think the next time you guys see it, I will have it around at the other end of the shop and we'll get some primer on it. Hey guys, so it's the next day. I've been working on this job here for a little bit. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you all masked up before I put some primer on. So what I'm going to be doing in this case is a couple of coats of epoxy primer, which is what you need for your bare metal. Uh, epoxy primer, typically for mild steel for bigger areas. Uh, so it'll get two coats of epoxy and then two coats of uh, high build urethane primer. And then everything will get prepped and painted. Uh, often with these I'll prep and paint the inners and then put the doors on and then paint the outside of the rocker panel because typically I'm always doing, you know, sometimes the bottom of the door, sometimes other, other work on the vehicles. In this case, all I'm painting on this truck is the rocker and the roof. Oh, and a fuel door. I should remember that. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting some epoxy on, some primer. I have masked off the roof as well because there's a couple primer spots I need to do up there. So I'll bring you guys back a little later when it's all primed and kind of show you the next steps. So here's how we're looking with everything in primer. So I will let this sit till tomorrow, then this will all be sanded and then painted. So pretty straightforward. And then I've also, while I had this truck here, customer asked me about coating the frame. So it's nice to do all the boxes off. Now, obviously you can only get so much doing it like this, but it kind of seals everything up nice, especially on such a nice truck. 
and this, uh, you know, this is just chassis paint right over the rust. It's not, it's not like restoration quality stuff, but it makes it nice and clean, and it'll, uh, you know, this will last a few years. And it cleans up nice, and and that's what happens when you knock the lid off your paint gun and you're crawling around underneath the truck. Lost a whole cup of paint there. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to actually back this thing out for now. I'm going to bring in the tailgate and get it painted because I can't really fit it in here at the same time as fitting painting the rest of it. So I'm going to try and get that tailgate painted today and then I'll get this painted tomorrow. Tomorrow, Thursday, well, yeah, Friday morning, I'll be able to put this back together and I'll be on track to get it back to the customer. Well, it's the next day again. I have got the GM truck all prepped up, ready to put back in the booth and mask up for paint. So, like I said, we're painting this rocker and we're painting the roof. Just add a little bit of peeling paint, so I took care of that. I did paint the tailgate and fuel door yesterday, so I can work on putting that together. Well, that out there is drying after I paint it this afternoon. Um, you might notice there's two fuel doors. Interestingly enough, I have another job coming in next week, which also requires a fuel door, which is another one of these trucks, and it's the same color. So I just pre-painted the one for next week as well. And you might see here, this is what we call the uh, material indicator. So you know you've got enough material on when you, when you see it uh, hanging off the bottom. Obviously, that's going to require a little sand and polish, but that's minor. Oh, look at that. This one's got one, too. I guess I got just the right amount to clear on. So, I'm going to move some stuff around, get this out, get that truck in, get it painted today, and then tomorrow we can put it all together. Good morning again. It's Friday. It's early. The shop is just warming up. Still a little cold in here. So I gave the tailgate a little bit of a sand and polish at the end of the day yesterday. A little bit of texture and a few dust nibs I wanted to get rid of. And then the fuel door as well where I had that little dribble coming off the bottom. And so here is our painted rocker panel in the cab corner. Oh, there's how she looks all painted up. So I'm just going to spank this thing together and then I'll bring you guys back for one last look when she's all finished up. So here's our GM truck all finished up, washed up, ready for the customer. Uh, just one thing I was going to show you guys, some people have asked about this. Now the last thing I do on these whenever I do new panels, this is just a cheap undercoating gun. I fill it up with used motor oil. Now the reason I use used motor oil is because it's free and I always have lots of it kicking around. Um, something like a chainsaw bar oil, something like that that's nice and thick would probably be a little more effective, but I mean it's just something I do that's just a little extra. Anyway, it's not like I charge for it. Um, so on these trucks, on any of these trucks, they do have access plugs, just rubber plugs in the back side of the inner rocker. I like to pop those plugs out, use that undercoating gun and just pump some used motor oil inside the rocker and I tend to do it inside all the other panels too whenever I work on them. Um, you can see on this one, I basically pump it in there till it's leaking out the bottom. Now the reason I do that, now you see the way these are put on at the bottom, anything with a pinch weld where you've got two pieces of metal sandwiched together and plug welded. You know, you can't really get in between those pieces of metal. You can treat them before you weld it. You can do all that, but you're still burning some off with the weld. So I find by spraying that oil inside, it's going to seep into all those pinch welds. It's going to soak everything. Just another level of protection. So as you can see, we've got our rocker cab corner. Put a fuel door on this one. Painted the roof. And put a new tailgate on it as well. Um, and actually you can see there, so I had the tailgate open and I sprayed 
inside from both sides with the oil so you can see it's leaking out a bit around the handle and it'll be leaking out the bottom for a bit makes a little bit of a mess for a while but once you wash it a couple times it's it's gone so anyway guys um as always i don't do these videos saying this is the way this stuff's got to be done i just do this to uh, potentially help some guys out show you the way i do it um just to, in case you want to tackle this project you know this these rockers may not really be a diy thing unless you have you know a place to do it and some half decent tools but it definitely can be done i mean they're not uh, they're not that difficult so there it is as always you know like i always say i'm just an average body man so you know this is again just to help guys out and if it does help you out let me know in the comments and as always, I hope you come back and check out the next video.